Yeah, guys. Kevin from the Cartoon Company. Today, I'm going to talk about a subject that uh, annoys me a heap, um, and it's diagnostics and diagnostic ports. I hear guys all the time say, how does an OBD1 scan tool connect into this diagnostic port on the engine? Well, it's pretty simple. It's not the right diagnostic port. Use the correct one, and you'll get information out of it. Okay. And this confuses a lot of guys, and it confuses mechanics, and it's bloody annoying for me, because I hear it all the time, and it's through lack of knowledge on these engines. So, my goal with my channel is to spread some knowledge. And so guys use the right stuff, and can plug in and fix these vehicles quicker and easier. Now I've been doing these things since 2005, I came across them. Oh, it's like late 2004, I, I got an interest. So I've been doing it for a long time. So there's a lot of knowledge in my head. And so we're gonna get that knowledge out of my head and into a few videos. If you're after wiring information, and wiring, inst I don't sell diagrams as such, I sell instructions. So if you want the correct information, yes, I do sell them, but you get a lot of information and some of my help. Right, right now, let's have a look at this diagnostic. So, I happened to wait to do this video till a mate turned up. So we've got an old Hanatec scanner. We're not talking about OBD2 from the VVTi engines. We're going to be dealing with the square one and the rectangle. Just check that's the Toyota one. Yes, that's the Toyota one. So the rectangle and the semi-circle, we call it. We're talking about this port and the one that's on the engine, this port. So before we go a bit further, it's time to go back to school. To get communication, W is the check light. To make W flash, we bridge Earth with T, E, 1. So when you bridge T, E, 1 and E, 1, the check light flashes, and the scan tool just counts the flashes. So if you don't have a check light in place, you're not going to get anything. Then you also need uh, T, E2. So when you bridge TE2 in Earth, it outputs the data on the communication channel, which is VF1, or sometimes it's called ENG. To make the scan to talk work, you need those. The one on the engine has plus B because it powers the scan tool. The one inside the cabin powers external. With writing like that, I could have been a doctor. I am a doctor, I want you to see the doctor. So, I have this tool here for poking anyone in the eye who says we can't get communication with the engine. So let's have a look here. Looking at the information we've just seen, I've got this port here. It's gonna be tricky, we're gonna change hands. Put this on my head. Hopefully we can see this. So, on the lid, it has a diagram of what the ports are. W, uh, so this is a UCF20 loom. W, it's not present. TE1 is, E1 is, plus B is. TE2 is not present. So you can't get flash codes straight out of this if you're bridging directly. But if there is a light on the dash, which there is, on this vehicle, if it's wide factory, then you will get check codes, okay? So that will work, because you've got TE1 and E1, but you will not get any live data, because there's no TE2 to bridge. VF1 is, or VF2 is there, VF1 is present. Oh, there's one more. ECT. I forgot to mention that. If, if you want to get transmission info, 
you need ECT. So, in there, have a nice close look. So there's what's on the lid. Is it going to focus? It's not going to focus. I don't think you are going to get that. So there you have the diagnostics and what you need. You're not going to get comms with that one. This one, however, you can get comms with. We're going to go out and look at the mate bought a factory saw. Got my little pointy tool. Got my diagnostics. Oh, VVTI. We better look at the VVTI one while we're here. So here's VVTI. Here's the lid. There's an earth. No W. No T1. No T2. No VF1. No VF2. There's a plus B. That's all. So you're not going to get communication with that one. But those are OBD2. When I wire this loom, I wire this little adapter so I can get information. And I modify that so you can get some information. Ah, where's my pokey tool? I have my scan tool. Let's go have a look. So, mate doesn't realise, but he volunteered his Sora for this uh, video. So here's our diagnostic port sitting on the engine. Looking in here, no W. We have our earth, no VF, oh no, TE2. We have a TE1. And we have the ENG or, or uh, VF1, and we have a battery supply. So if I plug this one in here. Okay, so we have. We have an overdrive flashing constantly, so that's fine. And this one has the data for the check light. In the center here on the dash. So no check light as such fitted. It has, you can read uh, Japanese, it, it has warnings within there. Let's grab that scan tool. Come on out of there. So going inside, what we have in here is we have the semicircle one. So we go into the dash, and for you guys that are in America, of course you're going to be on that side, but but I'm I've got a Japanese car, so I'm on this side. Here's where it normally lives. Look at that. In there, it was actually pushed back. So there it is. Look, look, there's the right one. And the pins, again, it's on there. We'll take a photo of that. But it has all the necessary pins for communication. Again. Plug in. Check it powers up and hopefully it starts. It's, it's getting some uh, Getting a new alternator today and a new power steer pump and maybe some extractors. So again, our check light for our transmission is flashing. Here we go. It's a Japanese car. It's a Lexus. And in this case, I'm just going to go in as an other. And it's a semi-circle connector. We're going to the engine control. We're in engine control.
as you might have noticed, this is a topic that does annoy me a lot. And after many years, most mechanics should know how to use these properly. So there we go. Here it is counting flashes. So you can see those pulses, and it's actually pulsing because this one goes through the dash, the digital dash. It's checking trouble codes. It's going, it's a bit, bit ugly to see the screen. The screen on this unit is stuffed. It's actually got a code in it. Throttle position sensor. So we might have to look at that. That's pretty cool. Code 41. That's a bonus. We'll check that out. And let's get some live data. So we'll go into current data. And look at this. We have pulse width. Ignition advance. We have engine speed at 700. We have coolant temp. If I do modify the one on the engine, and I've done that in a couple of videos. I did it on um, the yellow ute. I did it on the high ace van. I did it on the Daimler loom. Things like the temperature are different, so the temperature will be a voltage. But it still gives the basic idea. We'll see if we can get to transmission out of this one too. With the amount of knowledge and info about these cars, I still see it. Guys are still wiring them wrong. Saw one the other day, guy suggested you just connect all the power feeds that go onto the engine loom to one relay and away you go. That just created the biggest wiring stake as per that video. The, um, and it'll never idle right, it'll never run right guys firing them up on the stand just power them up power up the ECU to, to a, a power supply that's fine for on the stand but it's not fine to make it run properly and the same as with these diagnostics you'd think after all these years guys would know they have the correct information but they still don't so here we have the transmission codes it is saying none no codes present and here it's pulsing it's just and it is just counting the flash of that uh, check light on the dash, the overdrive light. If you don't have the overdrive button in the right place, it will stay on all the time, like this. Oh, can I see it? There we go. There it goes flashing. There it's on all the time. So you've got to have the overdrive button in the correct position. So when you're using these, there's the correct one under the dash for your OBD1 scan. It's got all the right info in it. And you can bridge it in there. You can still do the TE1 bridge in there. Hopefully uh, that explains the correct way of doing diagnostics. And it proves that it can be done. And it uses the right scan tool port. And as you uh, did see, I do get a little fired up about this. I do have my pokey stick to poke people in the eye when they say, we can't get in on the one on the engine. Or I've taken it to the garage, who should know better. And they've plugged into the one on the engine. If your garage attempts to plug into the to port on, on the engine, tell them they're stupid and suggest they use the one under the dash. Oh, well, I hope that's helpful and you've learned something. And uh, we're going to pop a power steer pump and an alternator and maybe some extractors on this Sora. We'll talk to you later.